Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. They did what? Pets, written by Intellectual Golf. Talia inhaled the captivating aroma of a chamomile tea and sighed deeply. There was nothing quite like chamomile tea for soothing your nerves. She couldn't stop a small smile at the thought of how contrary it was to add caffeine to chamomile. But without it, she would have fallen asleep hours before, and so she enjoyed a small sip of her blasphemous beverage. Traditionalists be damned, the ability to add caffeine to literally anything had made coffee a product that rose and fell in popularity like other cultural fads. An odd, high-pitched whistle sound announced the presence of something at the other end of her desk, and she opened her eyes just enough to squint through her lashes at the patron. She quickly closed her eyes again as the slight wave of queasiness coursed through her at the sight of the Utlantaku. Talia considered that perhaps sight was not the correct term. The Utlantaku were a bizarre species that were hard to describe or make comparisons of, simply because they refused to be seen, mostly. Atlantiku stood at average human heightish, took up about a human-sized area of space, and looked like a living watercolor painting from their immediate surroundings. Talia knew a fair amount about the cuttlefish, and their color-changing abilities were the closest comparisons she could make. But even that image failed to convey the non-appearance of the Atlantiku. Excuse me... I believe this file might have been mislabeled. The noise that Talia heard filtered through her translator, sounded like three wildly pitching train whistles shifting rapidly between the higher ranges of human hearing. The Atlantico spoke exclusively in whistling language, although there were reports that said that actually had two languages, one private language only spoken amongst their own kind, and the public whistling language they used around other species. Talia wasn't sure how, Aside from outright spying, someone would have figured that out. But it wasn't extremely important. What a pleasant surprise. I'm sorry. I think I misunderstood. It is pleasant that a file is mislabeled. Talia blushed slightly in embarrassment as she realized she had spoken aloud. She tried her best to look at the Atlantico's face area as she spoke. Although the queasy feeling the shifting colors evoked continued... My apologies, I meant that it was one of the more pleasant introductions I've had this week. Others are unpleasant. Oh, I'm not complaining. They mean well, but some patrons come across a little strong when providing a criticism of the filing system. It is not your job to receive feedback, such as a correction that brought me to here. Talia noticed that the translator didn't make the usual neutral tone it adopted when translating angry or negatively charged words. She assumed this meant that the Atlantico was simply stating a fact, which from a human could have come across as inconsiderate or socially awkward at best. Of course, speaking of, why do you believe that the file is mislabeled? The Atlantico paused for a second, and Talia couldn't be sure if this was still trying to figure out the meaning of a slip-up, or if it was doing something else entirely. Finally, one of its watercolor camouflaged appendages waved upwards slightly in a throwing-away gesture. The corner of Talia's mouth twitched upwards slightly in amusement, and yet another nearly an ununiversal gesture. The file is stored under the category Human Pets, and specifically, Adorable. This must be some kind of error. Talia raised her hand and made a come-hither gesture for her point of finger. The video screen popped up on a desk and began playing a video content associated with the file. On the screen, a smiling woman in her mid to late thirties with a vibrant red hair was speaking. Hey pet friends, I'm so excited today because today I have a new pet to show you all. The camera turns around and is pointing at a plastic container approximately three feet wide and two feet tall with no lid. Inside the container is a layer of sand, some small plants of indeterminate species, and a ball of fluffy blue fur about a foot wide and with two black orbs on either side of the ball facing the camera. Talia couldn't help but gasp slightly, and it would have been fair to guess whether the response was in shock or adoration. 
That's right, my friends, it's a Greekle. Now, for those of you who don't know, these little guys are pretty tough to keep as pets. But if you're an expert like me, there is no problem. And for all your trolls out there, there is nothing illegal about owning a Greekle. You jokes just keep trying to demonetize me and claim that I am not a responsible pet mom. I am still here, so obviously you are wrong. The camera began moving towards the Greekle, and the woman continued narrating. But the audio was suddenly cut off as the blue furball launched itself at the camera and became 90% teeth. Talia paused the video as she realized she hadn't checked the tags for the video before hitting play, and she chided herself mentally for forgetting once again. She brought up the tags and what she read made her inhale and clench her teeth, creating a hissing sound. The Atlantiku had made a sing-songy whistling sound, and the translator informed her that it was laughing. Talia raised an eyebrow at while maintaining a neutral expression. The Atlantico repeated the sing-song whistle and then after a beat explained, I apologize, I found it amusing that your species also has a display associated with false pain, what you might call empathy. My species hisses in response to disaster or potential disaster as well. We also express disbelief, confusion or consternation with a common physical expression. Although I think you must take my word on that given how we appear to others. Talia chuckled in response and then eyed the video screen askance. The tags on the video were pet, adorable, greekle, blood gore, dismemberment, idiot, etc. She wasn't especially surprised as she had seen more than a few videos and photos of the aftermath of human interaction with greekles. The issue was that the cute little fur ball sitting in the plastic container was essentially made up of three things, fur, teeth, and an insatiable appetite. Greekles had developed on a volcanic planet in the outskirts of their solar system, warm enough thanks to the core and volcanic activity to support life. But so far away from the sun, most of the planet's surface was frozen tundra. The Greekel were the top predator on their planet indiscriminately consuming any organic material they came across, living or not. The physiology reflected this omnivorous predatory nature as their mouths were filled with hundreds of plate-like teeth that were smooth on the exterior side and serrated on the interior. Whatever went into a Greekle's mouth was not leaving, barring the destruction of the Greekle or the complete separation of the portion lost to the maw of the Greekle. Talia had no intention of watching the rest of the video since she did not enjoy the sight of blood or derive any joy from the pain of others. She didn't quite understand people who did, but she tried not to judge since she certainly had her own faults. So it is incorrectly labeled, correct? Talia sighed heavily and pressed her lips together making a <laughs> sound. Yes and no. How is it both well? Technically and legally, Greekles aren't pets, so yes, it shouldn't be filed under human pets. But also, it is a pet because us humans are um, overly optimistic, or more crazy. Obviously, but I do not see what the human propensity for self-endangerment has to do with the correct labeling of media. So, I can retag this rather than file it correctly under dangerous animals. However, within a week, the automated filing intelligence, AFI, will put the right back into the pet section. Lots of people are going to retag the video, since that's where they expect to see it. And that's what the media was created under. It should not matter if many incorrect people say a thing that is wrong. The number of incorrect voices does not change the fact that they are incorrect. If only the fact that thing was true was enough to convince people to treat it as a fact, then humans and most other intelligent species wouldn't repeat history. The fact is, it'll get retagged because some very stubborn or dense people believe Greekles can be pets. The Atlantico made a low, humming whistle. I must admit, we also suffer from the habit of mass incorrectness, so I am not so dense as to not understand. May I question, though? Of course. Like I said, you're the nicest person I've interacted with all week, and I love sharing information. Why would this human female attempt to make a Greekle her pet? Are you humans not the species that discovered the Greekle? I'm fairly certain the videos from First Contact were quite popular in the information sharing spaces. Yeah, uh, thing is, they are adorable when their mouths are closed, so, uh, 
People think that they are cute, they can be tamed or, at the very least, sated and made docile. But every encounter with the Greco, hungry or not, ends like this video. Right, uh, um, I can't really explain it. But I can tell you humans are like Greekles, in the same way they eat anything and everything in sight. I can guarantee humans will at some point try to make anything and everything into a pet, especially if it's adorable. The Atlantico was quiet for several moments, and then set the hard disk on the desk. Would it be too much to refile this anyways? Ha! <laughs> no problem at all. Just don't get cross at me when it's back under pets in a few days. I would not be angry with you. You did not design the Afi. Why would I be angry with you for something you did not do? If I could answer that, I would be a very wealthy psychologist. It looks like I have another patron to assist, but it was very nice interacting with you. You as well. My name is Seven Warbling Whistles, Timothy. Nice to meet you, Timothy. I'm Talia. Have a great day. Talia turned to assist the other patron, Pesita Walken, who had walked into her desk and was literally waving around the hard disk in one of its feathered appendages. It made several very loud squawks, which were even louder than the parrot species from Earth the aliens bore a striking resemblance to. If a parrot had been crossbred with a pterodactyl and a six-limbed mammal. What is animal excrement? Oh, goody. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.